What's up people? Today we're going to learn, uh, well this is lecture three of astrodynamics and we're going to talk about constants of the orbits. Uh, things like conservation of angular momentum and conservation of mechanical energy. Um, so last time what we had was uh, the, the two body equation of motion. So that was the acceleration vector r double dot is equal to this parameter mu which is gm um, times the radius vector separating the two divided by the magnitude of that squared uh, no cubed um, so basically what we're gonna do in this video is derive one, the conservation of mechanical energy and conservation of angular velocity. Momentum. Momentum. And we're, we're deriving these two things from that. Let's start. So, mechanical energy. Both of these have four steps. So, number one. Dot multiply the two-body equation of motion by r dot. Why? No one knows. Somebody probably knows. Somebody obviously knows because somebody on God's green earth came up with this derivation and um, thought to do that. Now, people who learn these things probably don't care quite so much uh, why we do them, or why we do them the way we do them, just that we do do them the way we do them. So what's important about derivations? Like you learn them and then you forget them and you just use the result. Uh, you might think, well I don't, I don't, I shouldn't have to learn these because I only use the equation in the real world just as it is. I don't need to know how I got it. Well, it's good to uh, kind of generally know where an equation comes from, like what principles back it up. It, it's not really necessary, necessary to know um, each step of the way, like you, there's no point in memorizing that, don't waste space in your brain. But just know the important parts of a derivation, which is like where it came from. And we get these things from the two-body equation of motion. The rest of this stuff is just just flubber stuff. Things that work but don't see why. So r dot dot r double dot plus r dot mu over r cubed r equals zero. Alright. That's step one. Step two we want this in terms of velocity and because uh, if you remember uh, kinetic energy is in terms of velocity so let's do this we know V is equal to R dot V dot is equal to R double dot acceleration and so uh, this in terms of V is going to be uh, v dot v dot plus mu over r cubed r dot we'll, we'll leave this one as r dot just cause we can just just cause we have rather uh, similar looking terms here and um, it'll become useful to get 
get past this vector notation because energy isn't a vector. And as it turns out, um, v dot v dot is going to equal just v times v dot the magnitudes of those take a moment and prove that to yourself if you're skeptical and the same goes true for r dot r dot is equal to that okay and so our equation becomes v times v dot plus mu over r cubed times r r dot this will turn into that um and so now we can move on to the next part of this derivation which is rather magical so turns out this principle will come in handy, this relationship I should say. That one and mu over r squared times r dot is equal to the derivative well, of minus mu over r. Movie over there so you can see it. Alright. So, <laughs> this, this may be true, and you'll see that it is if you've taken calc. Um, but who thought to do it here? Really smart people, that's who. Okay, so now you'll see that this will turn into ddt of b squared over 2 minus mu over r is equal to 0. All right, and finally, we get v squared over 2 minus mu over r is equal to a constant. And this constant here is the specific mechanical energy, epsilon. I think that's epsilon. I'm not sure. Um, and what does it mean to say specific? Well, it's uh, the mechanical energy divided by mass. So we, we uh, cancel mass out of the equation because it becomes more general that way, and we like it better. And you'll see that a lot in different uh, space equations and other science equation things, like in thermo and, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know why they do it. They just do. I think it's so that you can have one equation for every problem. But, okay, look at this. This is actually energy, and you should recognize it if you've taken physics. This is kinetic energy, but kinetic energy with mass in it is mv squared over 2, 1 half mv squared. And then this is potential energy. Um, uh, well, I don't know if most people cover this in physics, but... A gravitational potential energy is this thing right here. And so this is mu, and um, of course mass cancels out, because this is specific. And, um, oh yes, and actually, fun fact, if you add like electrical potential energy, it's actually very similar, only instead of m's it's q, which is charge, and instead of g it's k, but the relationship is still the same. But that, that doesn't matter, we, we don't need to worry about that, because this is not, not electro, whatever, electromagnetism, this is astrodynamics. But, as my professor of astrodynamics say, you don't know what knowledge you're going to end up needing, so he often goes on tangents like this. I might as well, too. He's rubbing off on me. Ah. Alright, I have five minutes of memory card left. Let's see if I can get through angular momentum. So, we start the same way. With, but only instead of dot 
multiplying the two-body equation of motion by r dot, we cross multiply it by r. Why? I thought I told you not to ask. So r cross r double dot plus r cross mu over r cubed r is equal to zero. Two, remember that any vector multiplied by itself is zero, so the above equation becomes r cross r double dot is zero. Because this is zero anyway, but this is not trivial. Um, and things like the word trivial, that's a stupid word. Why take something that, that by definition means easy and make it sound hard, you know? I don't know. Academia is just weird. Um, three. Step three. Um, pull a similar trick like we did for um, the mechanical energy and say that uh, R cross R double dot is equal to D DT. I'm not sure what the last thing you heard was, but I was just explaining how... Um, Okay, we're pulling a similar trick like uh, the derivation of her um, mechanical energy. And so what we have here is the we want to know what the derivative is for this. No, that what what this is a derivative of and it's a derivative of this r cross r dot which is v. And so the this thing is equal to 0 and that tells us that this bit in here is constant. R cross V equals constant and this is our angular momentum. H they call it. Don't know why. Mass M is taken for mass so I don't know. But uh, you might you might stop here and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought angular momentum is um, r cross what is it? R cross momentum? Yeah, or something or other. Physics memory is failing me. I forget. I did do well in physics, despite my lack of memory of it semesters later. But uh, anyway, the point is, where's mass? Momentum, by definition, has mass in it. Well, same thing with the, with the um, mechanical energy. Mass goes away because it's not needed. Um, we use a specific quantity for H. All right, so now we have these two constants of motion, E equals V squared over two minus mu over R, and H is equal to R cross V. Now this is a vector. Let me show you something quick. You're gonna love this. All right, here's our planet. Here's our spaceship. Neep, 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 neep. Okay, so here's our local horizon line. It's perpendicular to R here. And our local vertical. And here's our velocity of the spacecraft. Um. This angle here is called the zenith angle, gamma, and this angle here is called the flight path angle, phi. And so um, you'll remember that the definition of a cross product is going to be um, the the two magnitudes multiplied by each other times the sine of the angle between them, which in this case is gamma. Now, nobody cares about gamma for some reason. They like phi much better. 
And so that would also be equal to um, RV cosine of the flight path angle. And so now we have another useful relationship just based on magnitudes. So if you don't have any information on vector stuff, these two things will get you places. Now, lastly, what we're going to do next is relate those two quantities to the geometry of the orbit. This turns out to be extremely useful. But I'm not going to drive it this time because there's something we need first. And what we need before we can do that is the trajectory equation. And this is very, very important. Um, and my professor said that it could easily be the most important equation we learn all semester. Um, so stay tuned for that next time um, because you're here learning astrodynamics and I assume you would want to know the most important thing that we learn in astrodynamics. <laughs> all right so that's it for this time. Stay tuned for the next one which should come out within a week I hope if I have time. Thank you for watching. Bye!